Hey, it's Random Code here, and today I want to showcase how I can set up a Spring Boot project with a PostgreSQL database inside each own Docker container, and how we can connect them inside Docker containers, and then in the end have an accessible Spring Boot API. And in this video, I'm very much going to be focusing on the Docker side setup and running stuff. So I'm just very quickly going to run through how my Spring Boot is set up and my SQL for my PostgreSQL. But most of this video is going to be focusing on how we should do all the Docker part of this entire setup. So firstly, let's just have a quick rundown of my Spring Boot application. It's a very simple Spring Boot application where I have a controller with a REST endpoint slash user slash ID, where we can get some users by their ID. This is then passed through a service layer, which then simply retrieves the user from a repository, which is connected to our database. It then simply maps this user entity from the database to a user DTO, user data transfer object. And the main takeaway from this is that we ex is that we extract all the data from the database, including IDs. In this case, we do not want to provide the IDs, so we map the user entity. It's only allowing us to get the name, age, and email, for example. Where if we look at the entity, it contains an ID, name, age, email, and a password. And in this case, we only want to show name, age, email, and not ID and password. So we're doing some mapping, some basic backend stuff. A repository then connected through our user entity, connecting to the table of name users. Use the repository using our user entity. We have a simple JPA query. Spring Boot. Get user entities by ID. But again, it's very much not about the Spring setup in this video. But I just wanted to go through it quickly to have a basic understanding of how everything works. So entity, repository, service, then it's to the controller, and then provide an endpoint slash user slash ID. That's the Spring Boot setup. We then have a Docker file for our Spring Boot application, which runs on Ellipse around 17. So we're going to run Java 17. We are then creating an argument for Java file saying that we need to find a target folder from our current position and inside the target folder take the jar file and think of this jar file as the variable name jar file then copy this found jar file as it is into our container with the name app.jar in like the root position and this then allow us to find any jar file no matter the version number or anything like that and it would then just be copied into our spring boot Docker container. It's more or less just a Java ellipse run Docker container. And we then run it with Java jar and then point into the Java file. So relatively simple. So just one thing to note about this is that because you're running the jar, every time you make changes in your code, you need to run a Maven clean and install to update your jar in your target folder. It doesn't it's not enough to just change the code, you also need to update your Java file. But once again, this would very much be at the end of a development cycle where we have some kind of like complete service. So there shouldn't be many changes. Everything should be tested and ready. And you then create your jar file and put it into a container. So that is very much the backend setup. We then also have a Postgres in this case database. And I'm running Postgres 16. Just to define a specific version, doesn't matter too much, shouldn't change too much. We then copy an init SQL file into this position of docker entry point init db.b because if we copy this file like this, it will then be run and then set up some basic environment for our database. And we then set some environment variables. We define a Postgres database name. So we're going to be calling it company in this case, a user random and a code password called code. And our init SQL file, then very simple in this case. Just create a table called users, matching the entity in the Spring Boot. Also, we are matching the setup of our structure for our entity in Spring Boot. These should be matching. And just to have some data, I'm inserting three users, a John, a Jane, and a Bob, some random ages, emails, and passwords. And note, my ID is serial, so it's going to be also incrementing. So it's automatically going to be creating the IDs of one, two, three. To then actually build everything, I would do it one at a time. So let's first start by building our assistant layer. So our Postgres Docker container. I would open a terminal 
And one thing to note, I will push this entire project to GitHub and I have tried my best to create a readme file, which should guide you through what I'm doing. And you can also see all the commands I'll be running in the terminal. So first of all, I would build my, or well, actually very first, we will start by creating a Docker network because when containers are connected, we need to have them on the same network. So we'll just simply do Docker network, create the name of my network. So in this case, we're just gonna call it my network. It's very simple. And we get uh, an ID from the created network. That's so important. And if we now do Docker network ls, we should see that my network is on the list of networks. I'm right now on a very clean Docker setup. So I actually have nothing here. So just showcase, we have Docker images. It's gonna be empty. Docker container ls, it's gonna be empty. So first of all, I would need to go to the position of my Postgres Docker file. So right now in the root of my project, so I'll just simply go into my CD into I am from here. So source main slash resources slash persistence. And from here, we should be able to see we have a Docker file. So now I can very simply just run Docker build from my current position and then name it with the tag PostgresDB, which just makes it a bit easier in the next command to actually connect to our image. So now this should take a few seconds. It's probably going to be quicker for me because I have some previous build of version probably laying somewhere hiding. Maybe not. But otherwise, when it's done loading, we should be able to see that we now have a image. So a PostgresDB image built a few seconds ago. And inside this terminal, I'm just going to be running it. And note, I'm not adding slash D, which I'm doing later, which puts it in dormant mode, which should allow us to actually see what's happening. So just to go through, we're doing Docker, run. We're naming the container, my database. We are defining that the network of this container is going to be my network, which we just created previously. And the image we're going to be running is PostgresDB, as we see up here. This will then start our Postgres container. And the main thing to note is because we're also running from a Postgres base image, this Postgres base image does already expose the port, the container port for this specific database type. And as we can see here, we get a bunch of logs put into the console. And most importantly, we can see that our database or our container is listening on port 5432, which is the base port for Postgres. So by default, any Postgres base image will expose the container port. But note also if we now do Docker container ls, note you can also do Docker, Docker ps to see the containers. And from here, we can see that we are exposing port 5432, but it's only a container port, meaning it's only accessible from other Docker containers on the same network. So now I would also run my first build my Spring Boot Docker setup. So now I'm in the root of my project, which is where I also have my Docker file for my Spring Boot project. I will then do Docker build once again from the current position to the current Docker file and tag it with Spring Boot service. This should be relatively quick. What should take the longest is probably copying the jar file. And there we go. It took me about, I don't know, 13 seconds, I think. And we should now also be able to see Docker images. We can now see we also have a Spring Boot service image. And we can then also run this image. And for this image to run a container, I'm doing docker run dash dormant. So I'm going to put it in the background. I don't want to show it, have it running in a specific terminal like this. We are port forwarding port 8080 to port 8080 localhost meaning we are port forwarding the port that my Spring Boot service is going to be exposing, allowing me to actually hit the slash user slash ID endpoint from localhost, which means that we can actually check everything works. We're just going to be naming the slash just backend, again running it on the same network, and we're going to be running our Spring Boot service image. So now when you do this, get an ID of our container, and we should be able to see that if we do Docker container ls, 
we should here be able to see that we now have two containers running, our Postgres DB and our Spring Boot service. And our Spring Boot service is going to be port forwarding container port 8080 to localhost port 8080. And now if we open something like Postman, or any website or any browser at this point, we should be able to add and look at localhost 8080 slash user slash ID. And when we do slash one, we are expecting to get some basic information about John. And as we can see here, we do. And we see here inside the container of the Postgres instance that we get no errors. So obviously we get the data, so everything's running fine. And that's very much the point that now we have two containers. Our database exposing local or container port 5432 on the same network, our Spring Boot service then connected to this port. And I didn't showcase it earlier, but inside our Spring Boot application, we have a property folder where we're defining that we're running on port 8080. We're defining a URL for our connection to our Postgres DB. And normally we would add some kind of, here we would add some kind of IP, but because we are connected through containers and we named our container MyDB, as you can see here, the names, we can actually connect it directly just using the name of the container as long as they're on the same Docker network. So we're just using, we're telling it it's a Postgres SQL instance, the position of my database, the IP more or less, the port number, and the specific database we want to connect to. Again, matching the username and password from our setup or Docker container running our Postgres. And we're just defining a Postgres SQL driver just again defining that it's Postgres that we can connect into. So very much our connection is very automatically done by Spring Boot, simply passing it some properties with the URL and the username password, which makes this process very easy. And it's very nice that we can actually just directly connect our Spring Boot application using the Docker container name. But in general, I think this is very much just all I want to showcase today. And as mentioned before, I will put a full which is full project on GitHub, where you can have a look at all the parts yourself. And the README should hopefully be a bit more helpful to very clearly showcase which commands I've been running and which commands actually does what. So if you enjoyed this showcase of running a Spring Boot in a Docker container, Postgres in a Docker container, connect them through Docker, so a Docker on a Docker, Docker network, and then exposing our Spring Boot to localhost, in general, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe and I wish you all a wonderful day.